Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' astounding book. Tarzan tightens his grip. A scream dies in King's throat. Below his mate stands fascinated, hypnotized, frozen with fear. Tarzan looks down upon the group. In awful silence, his toes gripping the rough bark of the broad limb, inch by inch he moves toward its tip. With one quick movement, he draws the sailor to him. The mighty forearm flexes, tenses, and like a stone shot from a catapult, King shoots down, down upon the heads of his comrades. The sight of King, one of his mates, hurtling from the tree, shocks Snipes, the leader of the pirates, into action. He reaches for a gun. He fires. The shot rings and echoes through the jungle. The bullet with a piece of spat buries itself in the tree. Before Snipes can press the trigger again, Tarzan, swift as a leaping panther, flashes upward and is lost in the black shadows of the towering cossus trees. There, King. What happened? What? Was he an ape? Let me get away! Let me go! Let me get away! Don't let him get near me again! Uh, come off it, King. Pull yourself together. Blimey, you aren't dead, Jake. Well, we'll all be dead. I tell you, we'll all be dead if we hang around here. King's doing. He goes through the trees like a monkey. He's as strong as an ox. I won't stay around here for all that time. I'll stay here as long as I say you will. See? Now, come on with you. What happened? I was going to... Put out that light there in the professor's cabin like you told me to. But all of a sudden, out of the tree whips a rope. I get around the neck. And first thing I know is I jerk into the tree. Blimey. Rope, eh? Uh, I don't know what he is. Ties a rope about me arms. And here I am, masked eye above the ground, tight in the guy's arms. Well, what will you do? Go on. Let Go me on. Give breath. Let me give me breath. He takes a knife out of his belt or whatever he wears. Points to the ox and signs to me that he'll cut me through if I goes near the place. Then he ups and carries me back here and cuts me down at you. Didn't he say nothing? No, he pinned it. What's what he don't have to? Am I? I won't never forget him. Well, mate, all we've got to do is slide this here chest into the hole, fill it up, and blow. Can't be too soon for me. <laughs> That's it, mate. Now, cough it over with a bit of brush. Then we'll get Tarzan, from his hidden perch, watches Snipes and his murderous crew bury the traitor in a new hiding place and hurry toward their beached boat. Their one idea is to put as much distance between themselves and this jungle terror as possible. Swiftly, silently as the night itself, Tarzan drops to the lower terrace and, squatting on a limb, stares curiously at the spot where the men have buried the box. If the men did not want the box, then why didn't they toss it aside? Tarzan understands burying the portion of a kill which he cannot eat, but the box? What do they want with that? Perhaps the men are going to return. That must be it. Tarzan swings to the ground. He bends over with his hands thrust aside the underbrush covering the spot. His hand strikes metal. It's the spade carelessly flung aside by one of the mutineers. Tarzan takes it into his hands, as he has seen the men do, and guiding it with untrained fingers, he pushes it into the ground. He digs. But Tarzan is not used to such a tool as this. The spade hurts his bare foot. His hands will not guide it as he wishes. Yet the ape man goes on. He digs and scrapes away. The loose dirt yields to it. The spade strikes the chest. Tarzan casts the spade aside. He peers into the hole. He runs his fingers over the chest, examining it. Abruptly, he reaches down, and as though the great box were an empty packing case, he pulls it from the hole. He hangs the spade over his back with a brass rope, picks up the chest, that great treasure chest, which taxed the combined strength of four men, lifts it to his shoulders, and plunges into the brush. He follows one of the ape trails and makes for a spot deep in the jungle. Nimble, lithe as any of the big cats, he pads silently, swiftly along the trail. He knows nothing about the contents of the treasure chest. He only knows that he does not like the cruel Tarmangani to whom he belongs, and that he wishes to annoy them so that they will leave his jungle. His pace slackens. He pauses for an instant, tense, listening. Satisfied, he flings down the chest and begins to dig with the spade. Tarzan learns quickly. The little practice has taught him a great deal about his youth. The hole deepens rapidly. In the surrounding trees, sleepy monkeys wait. Blink their eyes. 
He's down at the eight man and scores. The first golden fingers of the coming dawn tinge the eastern sky. Tarzan works fast. The hole is big enough. Quickly, he dumps the chest in, takes the earth over it. Bending, he smooths the dirt, covers it with twigs, leaves. A perfect concealment. Vastly different from the brush piled on his clumsy hiding place by snipes and his mates. With one last backward glance, Tarzan catches a vine and swings into the trees. Leisurely, he makes his way toward the little cove, beside which stands the hut. The sun glints over the distant mountains. The jungle wakes to a new day. Tarzan glances down into the clearing. He stops, fascinated. There before the hut stands S-H-E. Quietly, he lowers himself to the branch and sits, swinging his feet. While Jane is outside the hut preparing breakfast, Professor Porter, Philander, and Clayton are inside discussing their escape from the mutineers. <laughs> Rather a novelty for us, isn't it? To be able to sleep all night without the possibility of waking up with our throats cut. <laughs> now, Archimedes, you know that one can't wake up with a cut throat. Uh, that, 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 Philander, I... I was speaking metaphorically. One who is so lax in his mode of expression, you are much too meticulously particular. Uh, metaphorical or not, I endorse the sentiment. This is the first time for a week that I've had both eyes closed while I slept. Uh, where is Jane? Uh, outside, learning how to make coffee without a percolator. Do my senses deceive me? Or do I really smell bacon? Most emphatically, you smell bacon. Most amazing. Here we are on the west coast of Africa, miles from civilization, and yet we have bacon for breakfast. Oh, that's, 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 that's nothing amazing about it. I carried that bacon ashore myself. Breakfast? You want to stand in the harbor outside? Outside, I'd say. Uh, most assuredly. Why eat in the hut when we can eat out under the trees with the birds singing and... and the flies, Professor. Oh, 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 oh the... what? <laughs> now, you sit here, Daddy, on this packing table. And, and uh, uh, me, Jane? You sit here. So you can reach the coffee. That will be your duty. Oh, right. I'll pour it now. Give it a chance to cool in these tin mugs. Jane? Thank you. And you, Professor? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Philander? Uh, thank you. And now, myself. Can I do anything to help Jane? Yes. You may open that can of jam there. Of course. This one? That's it. <laughs> You know, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, of course you are. Why not? Have I not always been an exponent of the much debated theory that the simple life is the only solution of the conditions resultant from our chaotic existence of today? Uh, just the same. Uh, now, now, don't mistake me. I'm not being pessimistic. But the outlook here is not of the brightest. In the first place, we deliberately came to a place off the beaten track. Hence, our chances of being picked up are, well, remote. Then you think that we... that we are here for the rest of our lives? Oh, no, not necessarily. The loss of the ship will result in a search. But we can't build too much of it. Uh, really, I... I don't know that I care much. Possibly. But what about Jane? She's young. She doesn't have your interest in things archaeological. Yes, yes, yes. I spoke without thinking. A very delightful breakfast, Jane. Truly delightful. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Now, to get busy. First, a strong bar to the door. A separate room for you, Jane, and some other things to make us as comfortable as possible. Ah, I feel the need of a little exercise. Uh, I shall take a walk. Uh, join me, Philander? Of course, of course. Uh, now, as I was saying, last night when you dozed off to sleep, 
Uh, by the way, Philander, uh, that is most undignified. What? Falling asleep? Uh, now, don't deliberately misconstrue my language. I refer to your falling asleep while I was talking to you. Sorry, Archimedes, but despite your most enlightening remarks, I was beastly sleeping. <laughs> Professor Porter and Philander, intent on their discussion of things scientific, wander deeper and deeper into the jungle. Night falls. Oblivious to everything except their discussion, the two friends wander on and on. From the matted mass of underbrush, Numa's cruel yellow eyes watch. Thank you, Numa roars. 